You've mentioned using imagery to modify behavior. Would you expand on that? Uh, I'll give you an example from my own personal experience. When I was in college, I hung around all these great athletes, great football players, basketball players, some of them went on to the pros, you know, uh, just relative to them, I was not a very good athlete at all. And, uh, but I hung around with them and uh, continued to participate in athletics after I left college and still do. Uh, but in order for me to be able to compete and have my mind right, uh, I had to see myself as an athlete. So I started doing what Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and a lot of other great athletes did, which is they imagined themselves in situations. Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant both imagined themselves shooting game-winning shots. They would practice and imagine that they were shooting the game-winning shot. And then they would just sit in a meditation and imagine themselves doing the same kind of things, doing um, things that were just phenomenal athletic uh, kinds of uh, behaviors. And so uh, I started doing the same thing. And I started seeing myself as uh, a superior athlete. Uh, and if you take a couple of people and one of them imagines themselves as a great athlete and one imagines themselves as uh, somebody that's just going to work out, the great athlete imaginer will perform significantly better in terms of their daily behavior. They'll eat, uh, sleep, work out like an athlete, like a great athlete, instead of just go out and like get in a workout today. Uh, the, uh, the mind uses imagery to store memories. So when we remember something, we usually remember an image. Uh, when we recall things, we tend to recall images. Uh, and so we build uh, neural structures around those images. Those images allow us to unconsciously behave. And using the unconscious mind to control our behavior is much more powerful than trying to use our conscious mind. Uh, the conscious mind uh, has to A, be aware of what we're doing habitually. B, it has to take control of it. And then uh, C, it has to monitor whether we're continuing to uh, behave in this new way, which takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of focus. And we just don't have the energy to do that most of the time. So when we consciously try to change our behaviors, we fail. But if we consciously imagine ourselves uh, involved in new behaviors, um, then we build neural pathways and then we can unconsciously change our behavior. Um, the uh, imagery that we use, if we tie that to other things like sounds, smells, other sensual uh, characteristics, it not only strengthens the behavior, but it ties that new neural pathway to other neural pathways where those sounds and smells are connected and stabilizes that habituation. And habituation is a really challenging thing, but imagery is the way to overcome the subconscious resistance because the subconscious mind is going to resist the changes in behavior. The subconscious mind is po very powerful. It's about 90% of what we do. Um, the conscious mind is only about 10%. So trying to use that 10% to overcome the 90%, probably not very smart. But if we use imagery, we can use that 90% to overcome the 90%, which gives us a much better chance of um, getting better results. And imagery is the most powerful tool that I believe we have for changing our behavior. Hi, I'm Ed Mitchell, CEO of Intent One. We really appreciate you taking time out to learn from our content. If you're interested in more, you can find us at intentone.net. Thanks so much. We appreciate you.